Lots of programs can do chroma keying. If the set is lit correctly, chroma keying is a breeze. And uh, if it's not, it's a little bit more difficult. It can be disastrous. Red is very good at chroma keying, even in not so perfect situations. And I've got a good example. I could have brought the perfect example with a well-lit uh, green background and uh, showed you how easy it is to get all that out. But you know what? So what? Every program can do that. I want to take one that's not so clean, maybe needs a little bit of work, and really give it a go and see if we can get it to work with the uh, chroma key filters and a couple other filters. So let's start in the timeline. And you can follow along with me here in your data CD. There are the files that you need. I'm going to change this track media on track two to a movie file. And I'm going to find chroma keying folder, chroma hood for video two. And for video one, movie file, chroma key, AVI. Let's change our duration. Duration needs to be three seconds, which mine is already. And as you can see, it's a dude standing there in front of a green backdrop, which is less than perfect. You can see the, uh, the marks here. You can see that this side is plenty lighter than this side. And that's going to be a bit of an issue when we start chroma keying. Strange though, this side of his face is a little bit lighter than this side. This must be artificial light back here, and we've got sunlight over here, so whew, it's going to be interesting. On track two, we've got a shot of the neighborhood, which is where we're going to actually put him um, when, when all is said and done. So let's go back down to the timeline. And on track one, which I'm going to rename, uh, green screen dude. Track two, I'm going to rename neighborhood. Uh, let's use the English spelling. That's close enough. Okay, so we got green screen dude on the top and the neighborhood on the bottom. So far, all we can see is the green screen dude on the top. We're going to apply a couple of filters to this one. First, we're going to go with, uh, under keys and matte, we're going to go with chroma key. Next, we're going to put on there, under keys and matte, we're going to put a composite choker. And finally, we're also going to add under colors and blurs a little color correction. So drop those three filters on your green screen dude track. And then head up to the controls window. The last filter I put on there was color correction. I'm going to start with chroma key first though. So I click on chroma key down in the timeline and it gives me my chroma key preferences here. I'm going to click this eyedropper and I'm going to bring the eyedropper over and select probably this darker green. And there you can see that I've got a little bit of a, well, a mess. See, it wasn't perfectly lit, wasn't uh, uniform. There's other stuff going on here. But we're going to fix this, and we're going to make it a pretty fairly clean key. All right, here in the chroma key window, we've got a couple of different options. We've got our matte, which is where I selected the color. We've got spill suppression, and we've got garbage matte. Let's start with the garbage mat. This is going to unlock this. It's going to let us select areas that we want to completely remove any foreground information from. So as I move the left, watch the left of the screen come in more and more. You got to be careful with this, though, because if this guy moves his arms, that's me, by the way, um, it's going to get cut off right here because this is basically a mat. So we don't want that to happen, but I do need to get rid of that stuff at the top. This area right here is going to be a pain, but I'll show you how we can get around that. Now I'm going to bring the right end just a little bit, and I'm going to leave the bottom alone. And that right there is our garbage mat. So everything outside this is automatically removed. I know this arm moves a little bit later down the line, so I want to make sure. See, as I go, as I went down the line here, our, all our garbage mat information is gone because I forgot to do the interpolations. What I want to do is hold them. So I'm going to go with hold here. And since in this situation, I'm not going to be setting keyframes and expecting them to move over time, I'm going to go ahead and move to static mode. So that everything I do now is going to be a constant 
Actually, these need to be constant too. Everything that I do is now going to be constant instead of interpolated. Next, I'm going to go to the Matte tab and I'm going to play with the density here. I'm going to bring this down and you can see what this is doing here to my image. It's bringing a lot of the noise out, so that's good. Got a lot of that noise out and I'm going to add a little of the lightness. And you can see part of my face going away there, so I need to bring that back up. And part of this white t-shirt's going away too. All right, so now it's time to hit the composite choker. Go ahead and click on the composite choker in the timeline, which brings up these controls. I'm going to go ahead and activate choke one. And that really makes a difference. You can see that choke. Actually, that looks really weird. It's kind of creepy. But uh, it's going to choke down around the edges. And that's basically just going back and forth between chroma key and fixing the, uh, the density and the lightness here. That's pretty good. Then I go back to the composite choker. And I'm going to add a little, choke it down a little bit more. Finally, I go to the color correction. And I can change the hue here. And it's going to adjust just a little bit. Give me some saturation options. My, I'll put my black and my white. And adjust my brightness and my contrast. If I need to, I can adjust all these. For this clip, I don't really particularly need to adjust any of these. So I'm just going to go through and hit none. In fact, if you want to, you can just take it completely off. You can just take it completely off by hitting delete. So far, it's not so bad. If I play with the choker a little bit, I can get it to do some halfway decent stuff here. And right around three and a half seems to be pretty good for my composite choker. I do still have this square up here. This Actually, that's a triangle or something, a little white triangle up there. I'm going to show you an easy way to get rid of that. If you've got something that just won't go away, just come down here and mask the dang thing out. I'm just going to make a new spline track. That brings my pen tool up. Go up here. Circle this sucker. There's my mask. Close this spline track. Open up green screen dude and just drag it down here to mask. And then I'm going to invert the mask. And that got rid of this very nicely. So I don't have that there anymore. Now as I move along my timeline, my accelerated draft preview is going to bring back the green screen. But for the most part, when I let it go, hey, things are looking good. So all we used was the chroma key filter and a composite choker. I guess back here at the end, you're going to run out of neighborhood video. So what you need to do is click and open up the neighborhood track, click face, and then come up here to the controls window where you can loop it. And I'm going to go ahead and click loop movie. And I'll put an increment of two, and that puts the neighborhood back behind the green screen dude. So you can render, you can uh, preview to RAM and see if you like it. If not, you might need to lighten up on the composite choker. You might need to uh, tighten down on the composite choker. Here's my final render. Probably could be better, but remember, we are using a, a not so perfect example of a chroma key. So that's what the power of Boris Red and Boris Effects is when it comes to chroma keying.